following program is closed captioned for the thinking impaired. The R Gang comedies. They were made mostly in the 30s. Hal Roach made them. They used child <laughs> actors. And they couldn't remember lines. Consequently, there's about one word of dialogue to every half hour of music. <laughs> and Hal Roach had four tunes that he played over and over again during them. They break into one suddenly and suddenly another one. It goes something like this. <laughs> <laughs> Opening shot, five kids sitting on a curb with a dog with a circle in his eye, doped out. <laughs> I don't feel like going to school today. Me neither. In that way of overacting that only kids have. How about you, Stymie? Little black child. I'm too scared to it. Always frightened. His hair in a perpetual state of rising, you know, at all times, rolling his eyes. And they even asked the dog, you want to go to school, Petey? No, he doesn't want to go to school either. <laughs> and of course, the rich kid chauffeur, Master Martin, your mother wants you in the limousine and home this instant and put on your back brace. Oh, gee! <laughs> The moral was simple. It's no fun to be a millionaire's child during the Depression. <laughs> An alfalfa switzer singing too high key. I'm in the mood for love. Simply just comes out of nowhere. <laughs> they decide they're going to play hooky, have measles, and they take a strainer and spat black paint through it, all except Stymie, little black child who, in a triumph of good taste, spats white paint <laughs> through his, so you know he's a black child. <laughs> the dog has measles, too. <laughs> And along comes the truant officer, usually Edgar Kennedy, or some guy that pulls hair out of his head, slow burn. And everybody in the 30s always said, say, before they said anything. Say, what are you kids doing? <laughs> Nothing. It's the 20 minutes into the program. They start a chase. Oh, I'll get you, kids. Finally, it turns out the kids at school had ice cream and cake, didn't even have to learn at all, and they missed out, and there's a moral. We'll never play hooky again. Robert Klein with his tribute to the R Gang comedies. Hi, and welcome to the 34th podcast of the Brain Sandwich Show. Mike Madonna here, and for a number of years I was a producer of the Brain Sandwich Show on radio. Now we've moved to podcasting because uh, changes at the station we were at negated our presence there. So happier to be here uh, for a number of reasons, one of which we can say and do anything we want. And the other reason is we're not under a bunch of stupid circus extras that we were <laughs> up there before. But I'm not bitter. Okay, let's move along with the movie reviews for this particular podcast. You're going to hear Children Shouldn't Play with Dead Things, Slugs, and Not of This Earth. And I certainly don't remember any of these reviews. <laughs> Haven't heard them for a number of years, I would guess. So I can't tell you what to listen for. Just hope you enjoy them. Uh, if you want to get a hold of us, brainboys at AOL.com. Here is Children Shouldn't Play with Dead Things. Talk to you later. Are you guys watching those god-awful movies again? 
Uh, no, 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 Jim. I'm watching uh, It's a Wonderful Life. Jimmy Stewart. And Donna Reed. It's our favorite. Uh-huh. Well, tomorrow our class has got a big project. We're dissecting frogs and science, and I need a good night's sleep. It's the most disgusting part of my teaching career. Why is that? All the kids throw eyeballs at each other, and frogs' legs go down the girls' backs, and intestines end up in the kids' milk. It's awful. Ooh, Ooh, that doesn't sound good. Uh Uh-uh, I don't like that. Well, keep it down because I really need a good night's sleep for this. By the way, what are you guys really watching? Children Uh, shouldn't play with dead things. Yeah. Cute, guys, cute. I mean, that's funny, you know, I got the science thing tomorrow. But tell me, really, what are you guys watching tomorrow? Children Children shouldn't shouldn't play play with with dead dead things. things. Forget about the frogs, guys. Tell me, what are you guys really going to watch? Oh, uh... It's a a Wonderful wonderful Life life with Jimmy Stewart and Donna Donna Reed. It's our favorite. Well, all right, then. We'll keep the volume down. I need a good night's sleep. Okay, good night. night. Is she gone? Yeah, yeah, I think she's gone. What do we got today? What do we got? Oh, Oh, we got got a movie called... Children shouldn't play with dead things. Yeah, oh, it's no. about these people on this island yeah. who are trying to make this movie or something, yeah. but they have this curse or something. They bring all these dead people back, yeah. and the dead people come up out of the grave, yeah. and they run around and they, they kill, kill everybody. everybody. Yeah. Oh, I love uh, it. Put it, put it in. in quick. Kneel around the grave. Clasp your hands together in the inverted prayer, like this. Open your minds. Remove all doubt, but be on your guard. Let nothing take hold of you. Let nothing enter your body. From this time on, you must be silent. O great diviner, master of the three worlds, disciple who became master, lord of the netherworld, lord of night, Prince of darkness, despoiler of light, diviner of powers, redeemer of passion, crucible of flesh, by the blood incarnate, by the flesh made proud, by the soul devoured of itself, by these words we do implore, by these deeds we do supplicate and call upon the grace of thee, Lord Almighty of the underworld, to release the souls of all thy servants who lie here unredeemed, to release them to serve thy servants bending their wills always to his, thus to thine own. By the blood of babes unborn, by the inversion of the Savior, by the bond of thine own hand, we do entreat thee, deliver them up to us, to command in thy name, to serve our will and thine own. By Lucifer, Beelzebub, Mephistopheles, Arcanes, and all the underlords we do entreat, let them rise, let them rise up. They must be out to lunch. (laughs) Shut up, Jeffrey. From bad dialogue, oh, spirits deliver us. From hokey makeup, spirits deliver us. From terrible script writing, oh, spirits deliver us. Jim, this movie, Children Shouldn't Play With Dead Things, has to rank there with the worst movies I've ever seen. It was uh, a, a admittedly low budget. I don't fault it for being a low budget movie. I just fault it for being a bad movie. It was a complete rip off, so to speak, of uh, Night of the Living Dead, and it came. To what? Well, this was a 1973 release, at least six years after Night of the Living Dead. They hadn't improved on it a bit. All they did was put it in color. The movie's not as good, and it had six years to perfect their art. I don't know. I bet you like this thing. How did you know that, Jay? <laughs> I had a feeling, Jim. Well, you know, and, and, and just because it's a rip-off of Night of the Living Dead, which it obviously is, it doesn't bother me at all because I think and, and bad script writing, no, 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 no. There are a lot of things in here to, to, to like. And as far as the acting and the directing, I mean, this guy, Alan Ormby, who plays the leading character, um, named Alan, oddly enough, um, he goes on to great things, and we'll talk about that later. But this is a good movie, Jay. There's a lot of good humor in this, a lot more humor, I think, 
as far as uh, script wise than in Night of the Living Dead. I mean, there was a lot of good visual humor in Night of the Living Dead, but this has it's like it's like almost like uh, uh, Rodney Dangerfield should have been in this, but he wasn't big, you know, back then. So, uh, he, you know, otherwise he would have probably been perfect for this movie, I think. Jim, the best humor. There was some a joke in there about how many ghouls does it take to change a light bulb. That's about the extent of the humor that they had in this movie. How, how can many? You think it was fun? Well, I guess it's two, Jim. One to open his eyes and one to put a bulb in each socket. I mean, that's about the extent of it. It's real clever stuff. And oh, I, you, stuff. you were doubled up at stuff like but that. It, well, I'll tell you, that, it, that wasn't one of my favorite ones. But these well, Actually, it wasn't even in there. I made it up. It goes to show you what you know. You but, weren't paying attention to this movie, and oh, I can understand why. Oh, well, it was well, a boring, okay, it was a well, terrible okay, movie. Okay, look, I, you know, it's hard to pay attention to the whole thing. You know, <laughs> But there were some great names. There were some great actors in here, great names. Seth Slarky was one of my favorites. Chester Phoebus. And Robert Smedley come to mind, and they, you know, they were they were just the minor characters. What was that? Oh, it must have been a, a maggots. Something. Jim. I think it was mag <laughs> maggots. Look, right there, <laughs> maggots. It's no, more maggots. no, that's a different movie, Dave. That's okay. a different movie. But anyway, really, it wasn't bad. So what? I mean, you haven't even told any of the story yet. How can anybody figure out what it's like? How could I figure out what it's like? I watched the movie. I can't figure out what it's like. Well, you know, I, I must say that I didn't like the main character, Alan. He was an idiot. I mean, he was just terrible. He, was, he, just, he, he, uh, he, he just he didn't like any of these people, number one, and he was always putting them down, and, you know, it was just, I didn't like his character at all. So I guess that, you know, that means he's a good actor, right? Maybe not. But anyway, what happens is this boatload of people, they go to this island. We don't know where it is. It, it's an island somewhere uh, near a a large city. You can see the city in the background. And there's this graveyard on the island. And um, they, well, this guy is kind of a... He's got some kind of... Mental problem. I think that's what it is. You had it built. Come on. You're I, really, am, I'm you're, I am. I'm, I was rolling there and I, I lost think, it. Think really hard of some reason uh, why you like this movie. It's going to take a while. Oh, well, just a minute. The he he has he likes to dabble in the occult I think okay, that's what's happening. So so the scene we heard when we when we opened up he's he's uh, asking Satan to come down and, and uh, raise all these people from the dead so they can control him, and that was the one big fault I had with the movie. Well, number two of them actually I had two big faults. One it was called children shouldn't play with dead things and there weren't any children in the movie at all. But that's beside the point. He called all these people that he had with him children. Okay, and and the other one. Was that in the beginning when he when he was doing the incantation, and uh, during the incantation it actually said that the, that these dead people would be so that these people here that are doing the incantation could use them for any purposes that they want. So when they started coming after him after they came out of the grave and started coming after him and eating everybody, all they had to do was just goes look stop, and they and then they would have stopped, and then and then they could have said well uh, bring me a ham and rye. And they'd have gotten him a ham and rye, and they could have done uh, Jimmy Cagg imitations, or you know, they could have done any, really anything they wanted with these people. But they didn't. They didn't think of that. They just kept eating, and they all got scared, and they ran around. And they all got eaten, basically. Yeah. What's interesting, Jim? I know that you said you have two reasons there that you don't like the movie. Two little reasons. I only really have one reason why I don't like the movie. Yeah. And what's that, Jay? That they made it in the first place. This is terrible. How could you possibly like this movie? I can't, there's, I can't there's imagine. There's a lot of good like things here in this movie. Children shouldn't play with dead things. Yeah. How can you say? How could you like this at all? Well, they're, because they're, I like the comedy, the, the the comedy aspects of it. And there's a there's a couple. There's an example. Oh, I know what that was. That was a a spider eating a moth. That's what that is. I was wondering what that was in the movie. It's a spider eating a moth, Jay. That's interesting, Jim. Now, why do you like the movie? Oh, oh, oh. Well, there's there's a comedic thing coming up here, and it's just... Here, here listen to this. You'll, you'll love this. This is great. Hey, Alan, who's your travel agent, Count Dracula? Wow. That's good, huh? <laughs> I like that, Jay. Yeah, Wasn't that great? That's real funny, Jim. But, but why did you like it? Oh. You, you mean another reason? I'm still looking for number one. Oh, all right. Well, I, oh, yeah, I know you like this one. There's another one coming up here. They get into this house that they're going to stay into, and, and he tells them this story about how the, the, care, the previous caretaker had hung himself and his family, and, and, and it, it killed all the, all the cats and the dogs, and, and uh, who knows what other horrible things. But they get in there, and they see some rats in there, and this is, this is great. You'll like this part coming up, Jay. Oh, this is getting worse all the time. What is it? Rats. 
Well, if we uh, come under siege and the supplies run low, rats do. In your case, that would be cannibalism. <laughs> CJ, there's another one. This movie is just riddled with these little comedic quips. It's just wonderful. I, I can't oh, believe you didn't like this. Jim, I had enough of this on Halloween. I mean, you must have obviously didn't give out candy to the kids this Halloween because you'd have heard jokes better than that from them. Where does, uh, where does uh, Batman take a bath? Where? In the bat room. Oh! <laughs> yeah, okay, see, well, what it, goes to like show, it goes to show that that's about the mentality of the people who made this movie. I still oh. don't know why you like this thing. Well, Jay, now I got, I'm going to have to tell you, since you're always cutting it down, this guy, Alan Offby, or whatever his name is, he went on to write a big movie. He went on to write Cat People. What the hell's a gun? Now, doesn't that count for anything? I mean, yeah, but we're not watching Cat People, though. Well, no, but this is his early work. I mean, it's, you know, you, you have to start out somewhere, and this, you know, this is what led up to that. This is well, Jim, I mean, I guess that makes sense, but I'm sure that Pavarotti gurgled as a small child, but I, I wouldn't want to go listen to it for two and a half hours at the Met. Well, two things, Jay. Most children are small, and it, it takes more than just gurgling and babbling to make a movie like this. I mean, they put it together, didn't they? They made it. It was released. You know, here it is. All these, uh, you know, they just put this whole thing together. It's it's pretty it's pretty good. Jim, what it took to put this movie together was about twenty thousand dollars, two days' work, and every college buddy that this guy had in the world. And besides that, what do you mean most children are small? What does it have to do with anything? Well, it's I don't know. It's just it's just you know small children. It, but anyway, Jay, I know they spent at least fifty, sixty thousand dollars on this movie. Wait a what? Small, <laughs> small children. What did it have to do with? Well, it doesn't have to do with anything. But yeah, it's, okay, that's what I it's figured. Just a, it's I just wanted to hear oh, you say oh, okay. it. It has nothing to do with anything. Let's go on. <laughs> I have to take them when I can get them, Jay. I mean, let's face it, okay? But but we're getting off the track here, Jay. Look, there's there's a really funny part here. You remember the the incantation scene at the beginning, okay? Well, there's an answer to that. One of the one of the people, one of the actresses that he has in the company that's with him that he calls his children, is sort of doesn't believe him. He think they, she thinks he's a jerk. I I thought he was a jerk too, but she really thinks he's a jerk. And she does sort of an answer to the incantation, and it's coming up right here. Okay. Thunderer Supreme, help! So what's with this little thing we're asking? A few rotting corpses to serve our meager needs. Now, what's the trouble, hmm? You got the blood you were asking, right? You got Orville, right? You got the warlock and his war chest, right? Is that a bargain, I ask you? A visit, first class. So where's the good? <laughs> Satan! You tweaker of puppy dog tails. You billy's bag of bombers. You poultry purveyor of potions. You half-witted haladon of horse manure. <laughs> Mighty master of evil. Ha! Your most terrifying trick is growing boards from old ladies' noses, scaring scarecrows, snitching buttons. Ingrown toenails, corns, and chicken pox. Jay, you gotta love that scene. That, I mean, she was great, wasn't she? She was really good. I mean, come on. Jim, this woman obviously did, didn't know her knish from a hole in the ground. There's, that's clear just from listening to her. Like the only, I guess the only thing you'll ever watch now is, is, is something, some big production movie like Exodus, right? Well, I did make a quick Exodus from this movie after watching it. It was the worst <sighs> movie I've ever seen. You think the jokes in this movie are bad? That was one of the worst ones I've ever heard. But anyway, look, we're, we're keep. <laughs> let me just finish. Since you don't like anything about it, I'll just finish. The best part in this whole movie was here's these ghouls. They're out running around. They're eating all these people. Uh, finally, Orville, the, the 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 corpse that they've dug up and they they're they're really defiling it. Not defiling it, but they're making fun of it and they take it into the house with them. They have a mock wedding ceremony. Well, Orville comes. He eats Alan. And then they all walk off, and they get onto the boat that they came on. They all kind of stumble onto the boat, and they go sailing off to the city to find more more victims. I think that was great. That was a great little touch at the end. Well, actually, once again, Jim, ironically, you missed the boat. They didn't set sail for the city to find more victims. They went off to the Dead Sea for a little sailing jaunt. Maybe it was the Gulf of Mexico, Jim. 
<laughs> Maybe that's where they would say, like, the Gulf of Mexico. The Gulf of Mexico. <laughs> well, if you like oh. the stuff, the humor in this movie, you would love those stupid puns. One well, let's about make a me. movie then. We should make a movie. Jay, maybe we can give. Wait, maybe we can get as good a rating from ourselves as the three and a half lobotomies that I'm going to give this movie. So. Well, I'm not going to give it anything like that, Jim. Uh, I'm going to give it one lobotomy at the very most. I, and at the end, I mean, I'm still surprised you missed all that sailing away stuff. I mean, I bet they were going to the Great Lakes, like Lake Erie. I don't even have to make a pun out of that one. Or maybe over no. uh, over a little ways down to Lake Unburido. Or, or maybe, gee. Uh, Lake Unburido. Uh, yeah, Come I bet on. A, well, there were no jokes that bad in this movie. That's the worst thing I've ever heard. Well, let us get out of this one while we can, Jim. Thanks to Metro Video at 4491 Forest Park Boulevard in St. Louis for uh, letting us use the movie this week. I guess that's it, isn't it? Well, I know, Jay. They're going down to New Orleans to go to Lake Puncture Vein. Oh, we're getting out of here now. Bye. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Are you guys watching those god awful movies again? No, oh, no, Gene. No, we're watching It's a Wonderful Life. Uh huh. That's right with Jimmy Stewart. And Donna Reed. It's, it's our, our favorite. favorite. If I find out you two are lying to me, I'm going to slug the both of you. Oh, well, no, 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 well, no, we're, no, no, we're, we're, we're not watching it now. No, no, no but we're, we're going gonna, to. We're yeah, going to watch soon. it real uh, soon. Yeah. We're getting ready. Yeah. Well, that's another thing. That's all you guys have been doing. You just been laying around like a couple of slugs, you lazy bums. Well, what else do we have to do yeah, on We don't these have nights? anything else to do. No. Why don't you use your time more constructively? Well, we, we could read the paper. Yeah, we'll read the paper. We'll read the uh -huh. paper. That's good. Yeah. Forget that idea. The last time you guys read the paper, you ended up in the comic section. The only thing you read was Sluggo. Forget oh. that idea. Well, I like Sluggo. Yeah, I didn't think she noticed. Oh, that. I didn't I either, know. but well. Okay, all right. We'll just watch us a wonderful life, and, and we'll do something constructive you go later. To bed huh? now. Uh -huh. All right. Good night. Good, good night. night. She gone? Yeah, she's upstairs oh. now. Oh, boy. Oh, what do we got? I almost started laughing, Jim. Why? What, what do you got? She's talking about slugging us. Yeah, and yeah. Couple of, calls us slugs. And yeah. she wants us to, we're reading Sluggo in the paper. Yeah. Jim, we got slugs tonight. Ooh, oh, no, this is great. Disgusting. No, no, this is great. It's about these man-eating slugs that attack yeah. this town, and they go around, and they leave slug trails here and slug yeah, trails yeah. there. Oh, they're terrible. They're all over the town. They yeah. come out of the water faucets. Oh, and, but what's so oh. horrible about that? I mean, they're just slugs. Well, it's, well, yeah, but they're not just slugs, Jim. I mean, they're not like your average everyday slug. I mean, these slugs... Kill everybody! everybody. Yeah, oh, right. okay, yeah, Let's put, put it in. in. I gotta okay. see them. Man, what stinks like that? Oh, my God. Never saw nothing like it before. Not even in them. And something ate the sucker's eyes right now. Not only that, the coroner said his liver, kidneys, and heart are all gone, too. Dobbs, get out of my sight. Huh? I said get lost. Well, Jim, it was clear that the sheriff didn't want to hear much about what happened to this poor guy who got eaten by the slugs. In fact, nobody wants to hear about what uh, happens to people who get eaten by the slugs, as evidenced by this scene coming up right here. Hear about it? It was awful. Whatever got him ate his eyes right out of his head, or what used to be his head. His face was all bloody and, oh, for God's sakes, Marge, that's enough. I don't want to hear anymore. See, Jim, nobody wants to hear about these poor people who are attacked by these slugs. In fact, that's the problem with this movie. Well, actually, not the problem with the movie. It's the problem with the poor people in this town. See, nobody wants to hear about all the goings on, and by the time they're willing to listen, it's too late, and they're practically all eaten up. Not a bad movie. Actually, it borders on being a great movie, Jim. It had a few faults. Um, I can't say it's the best movie ever, but really, this was a gem. I loved it. The movie is Slugs, a 1987 Distron release, I'm sorry, Distro release, uh, under the auspices of New World Video. And it doesn't really have anybody in it that we know about or have ever heard about. Actually, there aren't even any good names in it. But it is apparently uh, a Spanish and American production because it was filmed in Madrid and New York, some little town called Lyons or Lyons, New York. And in Madrid, but I think it was really a fine movie. I, I'll have to agree with you, Jay. I I, ha, I had a lot of fun watching this movie, and uh, the, I was prepared for a bad movie because some friends of mine, including my wife, had watched it before, and and they didn't have good things to say about it. They said it was too good for us, <laughs> but they were wrong. <laughs> but uh, what I liked about the movie, Jay. In fact, what I like about all these movies that we watch is that. You can pick the people that you want to get it, you know, that you, that you want to get killed. 
you know, whoever, whoever the idiots are, you get, well, that guy's going to get it. And sure enough, they get it, you know. And you say, well, that pair, they're going to get it. Yeah, sure enough, they're going to get it. In this one, however, the person that I thought was going to get it, namely the chief of police, he didn't get it. He turned out to be kind of, kind of a sympathetic character, but not, not really. And the, and the mayor should have gotten it, but he didn't get it. But, the, uh, but other people that, that should have gotten it, they got it. Am I making any sense here? Not a bit, Jim. But that's never stopped you before. Let's take a quick look at the movie, Jim. In this town in New York, a bunch of little animals and eventually large people are being eaten by some unknown creatures. It turns out that through a good public health techniques, Jim, the, public, the health commissioner discovers the source of this outbreak of problems, which it turns out to be slugs who have uh, been uh, managed to get into the local toxic waste dump and eating some of the toxic waste they get carnivorous, aggressive and large and they multiply, uh, multiply uh, thousandfold and they lurk in the sewers underneath the town coming up occasionally just to eat people and bring them back down in the sewer. Of course nobody believes this including the chief of police and the mayor. They don't believe that this trouble is lurking just below their city even though the health commissioner has evidence to prove this and so the, the last part of the movie is kind of an adventure story, Jim. But the interesting first part is a psychological drama, the battle be among these characters, the, chair, the sheriff, the mayor, the health commissioner, the local groups, to, just to see who will believe that there actually is a danger and who wants to hide their head in the sand. And that's the interesting part of this movie, Jim. And that's where the characters are really developed. Coming up, I want to show you the sheriff, first of all. The sheriff's character is pr really wonderful. He, of course, is an obstructionist in this particular movie doesn't want anybody he doesn't believe that there's a problem or he doesn't want to believe there's a problem but he's a great character and some of the stuff we're going to start off here with a scene uh, a little bantering between the health commissioner and the sheriff sheriff you don't mind if i smoke do you i sure as hell do brady you can muck up your own lungs if you want but don't mess with mine today's your lucky day brady oh really why is that Litterin's a $500 fine in this state. Don't let me catch you doing it again. No, sheriff, you know what they found in those candies you're eating? Maggots. Yeah. Oh, no, Sheriff, Littering. it's a $500 fine. That kind of sets the tone, Jim, for their relationship through the rest of the movie. I found it kind of odd that it was actually the health commissioner who was the smoker here and the sheriff that was explaining about his uh, health being in jeopardy. A rather odd turn of events, I guess, but still, it was an, an interesting movie. What did you think? It was good, Jay, and oh my gosh. any number of scenes that we could play for, these, for the people that are listening out there, but of course we have to be sort of selective so we don't end up using, using the whole show for the movie review, but this one would be worth it, Jay. In fact, there's a scene coming up right here. You, you know in these movies they always give all these explanations before they really know what it is as to what could have caused all the damage or could have killed these people, and this, is, this movie's no exception. Uh, the sheriff comes up with some ideas, and, and some other people come up with some ideas, and they're really great. It's coming up right here. So, Sheriff, what do you think? I don't know. Wild dogs, maybe? Raccoons driven out of the hills by the cold? I don't buy that. Something that big would have done a lot more damage to the inside of the house. What's your bright idea, Mr. Health Inspector? <laughs> oh, rats, maybe? Rats? You willing to go on record with that? How can I do that? I'm not sure that it's rats. Well, there's finally something you're not sure of. Fancy that. Well, Jay, nobody's sure what's going on at this point, but we know it's not raccoons being driven down out of the country. I mean, every raccoon I know always strips bodies down to the bone. Aren't the ones that you know, didn't they do that? Or the ones on this block do, Jay. Yeah, yeah. Well, the scene you heard was between, again, the health commissioner and the sheriff, Jim, and uh, you see that their rapport is not that good. But, any but I'm sure that the health commissioner of the city of St. Louis would, would have no qualms about issuing a carnivorous slug warning if that were warranted, Jim. She does issue uh, heat, heat warnings and cold warnings and so on. So I really think that a carnivorous slug warning would, would really be one of the first things which she would, that she would do, despite any uh, political problems that were going on at the time. So I don't know if this is really realistic or not. Well, maybe not, but you're right. She would, she would as far as I know. But... Um as things progress on here, they realize that, that the slugs are, are uh, located in, well, they think that their nest is in one particular area of the, of the sewer system. And so they devise a plan. They have this professor. There's always some professor that's always around that has a plan. 
and um, he has this thing that blows up and when it comes in contact with water so he's going to help them destroy the uh, the slugs but before they can do that Jay another person is killed but but this time in a restaurant and and the the people that are in the restaurant get treated to a, a wonderful scene of this man getting his eyes and face eaten off right in front of them while they're having their lunch. Actually, it was probably brunch. I think it was Sunday brunch. But this scene coming up is between the owner, the cook, and the chief of police again. And it, it's, it's classic, Jay. You crazy? We got no worms here. We got worms here? Worms? Ma che cazzo sta a dire questo? His mom has more worms che io ho nella mia cucina. What's he saying? He says we got no worms here. He wants worms. Say that minchione of sheriff che la vada a fanculo, altrimenti I give him un bel minchione right up in his culo. Relax, Nostra, relax. Look, the worms that killed that boy out there didn't just roll a skate in here and jump on his plate. Ma io rispacco la faccia, cosa? Ma che cazzo sta a dire? Sheriff o non sheriff? It's about time I'm doing your job for you here. This is a matter for the health department. We found these on the plate. My guess is they came from the food. I got the no worms in my food. I got no worms here. Sure, sure. Well, well, what? Who died? I thought you knew a friend of yours, Dave Watson. What? Well, do I close this place or what? Well, I don't know that yet. Well, just tell me if they came from the food. How should I know? Maybe they did. Maybe they didn't. Why don't you just give me five minutes and I'll figure it out? Terrific. That's wonderful. Jay, that was one of the better. That was one of the best scenes in the movie. And the cook, you couldn't see it obviously because you're just listening, but he was making all these wonderful gestures about and, and speaking in Italian about what he's going to do to this to the chief of police. <laughs> it was just wonderful, Jay. I, this one, this is the this is the highlight of the movie for me here. You know, once again, Jim, I wish we had the health commissioner here on the show to talk about how they would handle a restaurant crisis like this. I mean, certainly something like that would deserve more than just a simple C rating or something, don't you think? I don't know if there's a rating for having worms, carnivorous worms that eat people in the restaurant, like a W rating. I think an sticker. S rating would be good for, for what's that. that. Slugs. Well, yeah, actually, you're right, Jim. They were really uh, baby slugs, not worms, although everybody called them worms. But oh, I mean, actually, they weren't baby slugs, Jay. They were, they were parasites that live in the blood of slugs. Oh. And they, had, and they had grown in this guy's system after he ate the slug, and the parasites grew, and yeah. Disgusting, huh? Really disgusting. Yeah. It, this movie actually was pretty disgusting. The scenes, the, the gory scenes of slugs eating people and bl blood spewing out and, you know, worms and people's eyeballs and, okay. and ears. And we can go on. It was, it was, on, pretty, it was pretty um, awful. It really was. I mean, yeah. it was very graphic as yeah, far as that Yeah, I understand that, that Jim. Go on with the rest of the movie, Jim. Well, it was a wonderful movie, Jay. I, what, what more could I say? Unless, of course, I, I, I could... Talk about the scene that's coming up in just a little bit here, Jay. That that had us rolling. I mean, we almost fell off the couch when, it, when they when they had this line. Basically, the uh, the health commissioner has figured out exactly what it is now. He knows it's carnivorous leeches, not leeches, slugs. I keep saying that. And uh, now he's trying to convince everybody. Of course, they think he's completely nuts. And the chief of police, uh, number one, you know, thinks he's just completely off his rocker. So another person gets killed. He, and the commissioner goes to talk to him about it, and this is the, this is the yeah, sheriff's so response to this. I want pictures of everything, understand? Sure, Sheriff. Don't sure, Sheriff, me unless you know you're sure. I'm sure that I'm sure, Sheriff. You better be, Dobbs. I'll shove my boots so far up your butt, you'll need a tow truck to get it out. Good morning, Sheriff. Who let you in here? Oh, it's nice to see you, too. Cut the smart remarks. You ain't allowed here. What do you want? Look, Sheriff, I know it sounds crazier than hell, but I got this theory. Now, maybe, just maybe, we're dealing with a, a mutant form of slug here, a, a kind that eats meat. Ha! <laughs> that don't sound crazy, Brady. That is crazy. Kill us slugs, for Christ's sakes. What'll it be next? Demented crickets? Rampaging mosquitoes, maybe? Boy, Jim, I'll tell you, I, I haven't heard lines like that since Boson Mate Robinson when I was in boot camp. He had some good ones like that, too. About the tow truck? Oh, he did, I'm huh? sure you had a few of those when you were in boot camp, <laughs> yeah, too. Pasika. Oh, really? Okay. Well, anyway, uh, really, this movie, uh, of course, we don't want to give away the surprise ending. Not surprise ending. We don't want to give away the exciting ending of the movie. Exciting. Uh -huh. But there are just a couple more scenes I wanted to point out before we wrap up here. A couple more things I thought were really interesting. In this scene, Jim, 
the commissioner there who's discovered the source of the contamination does what any good public health official would do. He goes out to the source of the contamination, tries to cut it off. Of course, in this case, he doesn't have the power to do it. He goes to the water commissioner. He finds that, you know, there are slugs in the water. He tries to get the water commissioner to shut the water off and went into town. And this is the kind of response he gets. What the hell are you doing here? Phillips, we have an emergency on our hands. Should I call the police, Mr. Phillips? That won't be necessary, Miss Wiley. Thank you. What is this, Brady? I want you to cut off the water in the south end section of town immediately. Is this your idea of a joke, huh? No, it's not my idea of a joke. Now, the water in that section of town has been contaminated by a mutated form of slug. If we don't shut the system down, and I mean now, we risk contaminating the entire city. Hold on. Mutated slugs? Contaminated water system? What the hell are you talking about? Phillips, listen to me. We're facing a disaster here. You need a long vacation, pal. This is, this is no time to argue. Who's arguing? I'm telling you you're nuts. We'll declare a health emergency. I'll take full responsibility. You ain't got the authority to declare happy birthday. Not in this town. Gee, I hate to say it, but it sounds a little like my dad. <laughs> when you came in in the monk's outfit, and he, he told me that he'd put me in an insane asylum if I ever ran around in, in a monk's outfit. And, it really brings back some memories okay, there, Jay. Well. <laughs> this guy didn't have a widow's peak, though, Jim. That's yeah, well, that's okay. He, he will soon. But the the, uh, the slugs eat one right into his forehead. It's pretty good. So that was the, He's a wonderful character. This movie was just full of, of characters like this. It was just a great movie. I, you know, it's just wonderful. There's a, a couple more characters coming up here, too, Jim. In another scene coming up here, Jim, the rodent inspector and his wife are having a little romantic banter at the expense of the slugs. Um, I'm, uh, I'm going to go out for a while. You belong? No, I don't think so. Where are you going? Well, to tell you the God's honest truth, Brady and I are going to go kill some man-eating slugs. Oh, I trust this so cold killer's locks so yours aren't 18 years old and speak French. <laughs> oh, <no>. <laughs> <laughs> but I tell you what, when I do get back, how about if we get naked and get crazy? Mm. I'll be here. That's a touching scene, isn't it, Jim? Romantic, if ever I've heard one. Touch. One thing I thought was odd about the scene, though, Jim, and actually it was odd about a couple of the characters in here. We uh, we said earlier that the film was made by a Spanish film company using uh, a Spanish film crew and mostly American actors. But when they made the movie, they filmed the soundtrack in Spanish. And then they dubbed over it in English. And sometimes they had the overdubs or the, the English dubs done by people who had an obvious Spanish accent. I thought that was kind of weird. If they're going to dub it over and put new voices in, why not have American accents or Eng you know, instead of Spanish accents? Who knows? Maybe there weren't any people around willing to do the voiceovers on this. It doesn't really matter anyway. I just thought it was kind of odd. That woman in particular, her name was like uh, Harriet Palmer or something, but she sounded like she came from just south of Madrid. I didn't really pick up on that at all. It, it, and if, if there was anything like that going on, it didn't bother me. Um, the only obvious accent was the woman that we just heard who was Scandinavian or something. You know, she, at least that's what I thought she was. But anyway. Just because you have no idea what a Scandinavian accent is, you think anything is Bjorn, 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 isn't Bjorn that, from yeah, that's Sesame Street, and that's what you think is a, Span a Swedish <laughs> you accent. Mean, you huh? mean it isn't? It is. Yeah, that's Never what mind. I thought. This woman was obviously Castilian Spanish, Jim. Oh. You could tell by the way she, she pronounced her Z's like a T-H. You mean how she said slucks? <laughs> sort of like that, yeah. <laughs> oh, well. We're not going to belabor this anymore. Jay, I, I have to... This is, a five, this is a five lobotomy for me. I love this movie. This was great. Well, I can't go quite that high, Jim. I think I, I'm pretty close. I'll get a four lobotomy. A four plus. I'm a four and a half lobotomy. I'm going to say four and a half. I don't think it had it... It didn't make it to basket case level. But it was very, very... You're saying that this movie was as good as Basket Case with a five of bottom. I, 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 yes. I just don't think so, the but it's very Maybe close. the ending wasn't as strong, but I, you know, overall, I just like the movie a lot. So I'm going to give it the benefit of the doubt and give it five lobotomies. Well, I'm not that far away from you with my four and a half. Yeah. I really like this movie, too. I, I recommend it heartily to everybody. And look, that car is the kind of car you drive. Don't tell me that's not a Subaru. 
It's not a, it's a Subaru. Subaru wagon. That's too angular. Say, oh, come no, on, don't be ridiculous. Thanks to Metro Video at 44, 7, 4491 Forest Park Boulevard, serving the Central West End and other places in the area for the use of this movie, Slugs. You'd think we'd know the address by now, huh? I think so. I go there every week. See you next week. Oh, no, not, no. Uh-uh. We're, we're watching It's a Wonderful Life. With Jimmy Stewart. And Donna Reed. It's, it's our, our favorite. favorite. Well, I don't have time to worry about it. I just saw a silverfish in the closet. I want to go to Bugman and have him spray. Oh, that's not so bad, Gene. It could have been a 30-foot moth from Mars. That's right, Gene. Our radioactive roaches from Uranus that go around and, yeah. and, just, and, and zap everybody. Yeah. All that kind of stuff. It could have been a lot worse. It could have. I mean, look at the, Stop. It could have been... Don't be ridiculous. I'm not... Worried about a roach from Mars? I've got enough problems with the gnat of this earth, not to mention that silverfish in the closet. Good night. Oh, good night, good night. Jane. Boy, that was close. <laughs> well, yeah, but... She almost got it. Yeah, and she almost said it, too, Jim. So what was it? Well, it's the name of the movie tonight. The, the real movie. Gnat of this earth? Well, not exactly. It's not of this earth. There's no gnats in it or bugs it's or anything It's not like a gnat? It's not a gnat. Is it a nit? It's a knot. Oh, come on. Stop what? nitpicking. It's not about nets. It's not about nits. Oh, what's it's it not about? about it's, just about this. it's about some guy who runs around looking like one of the Blues Brothers, uh-huh. and he's got this like metal briefcase handcuffed to his arm. You mean with the harmonica's in it? Well, not exactly. Harmonica. Inside of it is like this blood-sucking machine. And instead oh, of playing no. the blues, yeah. he just runs around and he kills, kills everybody. everybody. Oh, yeah, sounds okay, like a I'll wonderful, harmonious yeah. treat. Yeah, here, let's play it. Okay. Time narrows. There is death upon the bottom. Delvada must endure. Speak of the Earth creatures. They are second stage, subhuman, weak, and full of fright. They are optically primitive and must converse by moral sound. Speak of their blood. It may be as ours. I've sent to you 30 cubits for study. There must be more. Now the wars of Devana are ended. The conquered enemies dwindle. In the pens of pasture and time constricts. It is soon that shall all perish. Perhaps the blood of this planet shall answer. It is rich, clean, and rushes even now through the veins of my body. Then there is hope. The Council has sent instructions. I shall receive them. Your mission upon this globe is to be accomplished in five phases. In the first, you will study all characteristics of the Earth's subhumans. Phase one is study. In the second, you shall increase the quantity of Earth blood which you are transmitting to Devana. Phase two is more Earth blood. For phase three, we must have a live specimen, a subhuman to be used in vivisectory research. Phase three is a live specimen. You are phase four, in which earth blood value will be determined by your survival or your death. Phase four is my life or death. If the earth blood preserves your life, phase five will be the conquest, subjugation, and pasturing of the earth's subhumans upon your order. Phase five is conquest, subjugation, and pasturing if I live. I am returning. Whoo, Jim, I'll tell you what, that is a chilling portrait of the future of this world at the hands of people who are not of this earth. This was a 1977 movie, Not of This Earth. It's a Roger Corman movie that starts out, Jim, inexplicably, it has... uh, Scenes from all of Roger Corman's famous, or m- many of his most famous movies at the beginning with the, with the titles and the uh, introduction and stuff of the movie underneath it. All his uh, monsters, most Yeah, and I don't understand because none of those things were in this at all. No, in fact, there were, no were really no monsters, not at all. In fact, the, the uh, meanie, the bad guy in this, was really fairly sedate despite the fact that he sucked blood out of everybody. He wasn't really that awful as monsters go. He was just really a person who's, who had green eyes who kind of sucked the life out of people when he looked at him or something. But something like that. Not a particularly scary creature, more of a. Laughable. See, Laura's was actually scarier. Why? Well, just because she's trying to make this transition from porn films to, to legitimate, quote, legitimate acting. Well, she thought it was frightening because she's not doing pornographic stuff in this movie. That you was know, scary? Well, not, it's, well, I mean, in the first ten minutes, she has her clothes off in front of a mirror. I mean, well, that wasn't, she's very attractive. Why soft. would that be scary? Well, no, it's, it's, just, it's just scary that, that she's doing it. Jim, and and she's, she's choosing such good vehicles to make this transition. Does the female body frighten you, Jim? No. Have you found that no. it's <laughs> scary? No. Well, then, Terry, let's fast forward here. Jim. Okay. Fast Sorry. forward. Okay, now relax. How's your voice? I'm fine. Fine. Okay, fine. fine, fine. fine. <laughs> See, that's good. The, night, the, the woman is gone now. She's oh, not on the you. screen. What were you going to say? Well, about Tracy Lords isn't, isn't it crap? It's better than, you know, Midnight Plowboy. Okay. If you look at it in that context, yeah, you're right. You know, but Roger Carmen is maybe like a half a step above Midnight Plowboy. <laughs> Well, I guess. But anyway, They're I guess they're just really as different. stupid, but without sex. I mean, I'd rather I'd rather see the sex and not have a plot. 
I guess you got to find it. <laughs> you know, you're right in my dad. Thank you. Well, where can we get Midnight Plavoy? That's uh, right. I, I, think Tonight. I don't know. We have to go to Illinois. That's right. Since Peach came on and yeah. yanked him out well, of Peach the store. So hopefully it'll come back. Okay. Well, we didn't, let's say we'd have been better off with Midnight Plavoy. He's just putting stuff on his head in the furnace, Jim. Well, it wasn't just his head, Jay. That was his whole entire body. You just saw the head last is all. Oh. But one thing I want to know, Jay, that the, the opening in the furnace was like one foot by one foot, and he stuffed his whole body into it. It was a small... Jim, maybe Corman was trying to remake The Thin Man and didn't realize it. <laughs> yeah, maybe so. But, Jay, you mentioned earlier about how the uh, He's the alien reminded you of the Blues Brothers. And, one of and them. he did. I mean, he had the, sun, the dark glasses, the, you know, that, the, the hat, whatever that, like they call those hats that they wear, and, the, and an all-black suit and a you know, really bad tie. But what was even more remarkable, Jay, about this alien was he looked like, he looked like the Blues Brothers, but he talked like the Conehead. <laughs> he really did. And, and there's probably an example coming up in just a second here. You've got to hear this. Hey, baby. Nice. Hey, get away from the car. I never wanted you not to sound the warning high decibel noises near me. Yeah, I'm sorry. Sound the warning horn. I mean, he, it, it, all he'd have to do is say, find me consumables, and he, it would be perfect. And, he, and it goes on and on, Jay. He does, he does this all the time, and we could play these forever. I think um, one of the other good ones is he, is he, um, he says to um, Jeremy again, he goes, take me to the egress, you know, meaning, you know, let's go out the door. <laughs> and, uh, and then he, he directs his, one of his cohorts to where they can find this blood supply, and he says, it's only 300 decapods up the street. <laughs> <Yeah, it's> like... <laughs> and they used all kinds of strange uh, of units of measure. You heard them use cubits at the yeah. beginning. It's like, <laughs> right, right. They used everything from biblical... Is there like decacubits or something yeah, like that? It was there was just all kinds of weird things that they used. It was really funny. He spoke like a, like a conehead. All, if they had just said consumables, I think I'd have fallen off my chair. Of course, Jim, as hysterical as all that stuff really is, I still hated the movie. It was not really a pretty awful movie, even for Roger Corman, who gave us bucket of blood and all kinds of other wonderful stuff. I think horror at Party Beach and stuff, but this really wasn't wasn't very good. I, it was a remake of an old movie that was made in 1958 or something called Not of This Earth 2, which had nothing to do with this. I mean, only very marginally and it had to do with the same kind of subject matter. Oh, that's just okay. Now, see, here's the porno part. I mean, yeah, here's a softcore porn here. She's with her boyfriend, who's a policeman. And, uh, Let's fast forward. It's over pretty it. quick. Yeah, a little... <laughs> Yeah, let's just, let's just... Oh, I think I... I mean... Yeah, okay, okay. Okay, it's over. All right. Anyway, it's an awful movie. Well, there's there another really one, Jay. There's another one coming here. you got to hear this. This is okay. where the, the, the vacuum cleaner salesman well, comes from. I, I was just going to say, Jim, I think the vacuum cleaner salesman <laughs> might have saved the whole movie. It gave it, a, it... It caused me to give it a one rather than no, no, no lobotomy. You're not supposed to give your rating yet. All right, okay. Let's just say that at this point... I was still wanting to give it no lobotomies. Ah, then the okay. vacuum cleaner salesman comes along well, and it, it, it kicks it up to new well, low let's heights. Well, here. He's coming up right here. Okay. Good morning. I represent the Airways Vacuum Cleaning Company. Are you the gentleman of the house? This is my house. Crazy. I'd like to show you the premise. You wish that I purchase your machine? Well, I don't want you to purchase anything, mister. I just want to give you a free demonstration. You want to purchase, you purchase. You don't want to purchase, you don't have to purchase. I ain't going to force you to purchase. Now, this is one of our standard attachments. This will clean anything you got in the house from the deepest pile carpet to the most delicate fabric. Ain't that something? I do not wish to purchase. Well, let me finish a minute, will you, pal? This is, they say in the vernacular, is the darling of the vacuum cleaning world. If you've got any stopped up pipes or drains, whether it's in your kitchen, down in your cellar, this little baby will make all your problems go away. You just take it and you stick it right no in the pipe. No persistence. Leave my house. Jeez, give me a chance, buddy. It's only a demonstration. Let me show you what this little baby can do in your own cellar, and you'll turn flip-flops. No flip-flops. No flip-flops. Look, buddy, let me have five minutes of your time in your own cellar, and I'll prove to you that this little my baby... My cellar? That's right, five minutes. Come right in, young man. I should be glad to see your machine in operation. Great. That's right. He'd be glad, Jay. He takes him downstairs and sucks the blood out of him and then stuffs him in the, in the furnace. <laughs> but, but it's not over there, Jay. In just a little bit, somebody else shows up at the door, and it, and it all comes back. And it, it, there was some good writing in this. I mean, come on. A little bit. I, I, From thought, time there was, to time. I thought there was quite a few good oh, things. Oh, this actually. is when the, uh, the stripper, the stripper gram right, lady the comes to the door. Right, the stripper gram comes up, and it's right. coming up right here, okay? Thank you. You are attempting to sell me a vacuum 
room cleaner? <laughs> no, silly. I'm your birthday girl, you know, from the stripper gram company. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I mean, you can hear it. He's, just, he's completely deadpan the whole time. And it, it was probably a really hard role to do, actually. But he, then he takes her... Sends her through the, the uh, magic bean that goes back to Nirvana or whatever, or Divana, whatever it is, and she gets compressed into the size of, a, of an orange. <laughs> you know, the odd part, I guess, is that was Tracy Lars, wasn't her claim to fame that she was like a 16-year-old pretending to be 20 years old yeah. or something in the, in the porno hardcore porno Right, now porno she's a 20-year-old pretending to be 18. Whatever. But I think that, was, that was the big deal about her, wasn't it, that she was yes. underage? Yeah. Oh, yeah, she, that she was really underage. Young. Here's another scene with her in here, actually. Well... Isn't that, there's a lot of scenes in here with Tula it. Bottom. I think we're going up to Tula Bottom now, Jim. <laughs> there are but some that was redeeming a great features of this movie. But, I mean, this went on through the whole thing. I mean, it, it, the, whole, the whole juxtaposition position of uh, Blues Brothers and Coneheads was just, I loved that. That's the only reason I liked it. I mean, the movie itself wasn't really any good. And then there was this weird guy who looked like Dave, our bass player. Yeah, or, 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 I was thinking, I was thinking uh, Mar, uh, the Almond, one of the... What's one of the Almond Brothers, Greg yeah, Greg Almond. Almond. That's what I he's got white hair and a yeah. beard and, and dark glasses, yeah. <laughs> Oh, well. He's like a little like Dave, though, doesn't he? Yeah, he yeah. does, a little bit. I mean, not, he, Dave's skinnier, but yeah. And Dave's hair isn't blonde either. Well, no, it's not blonde, but if Dave's hair was blonde... But you think everybody who has a beard and long hair looks like Dave? No, I don't. Yes, you do. I don't either. Tell me All who right. your old girlfriends looked like Dave. Jay, there's one good thing that, that I can say about this movie that you'll like. What's that? I couldn't find any names to make fun of. I know, I was happy for that, too, Jay. <laughs> it made you have to defend the movie on its own merits. It actually That's didn't right. do so badly, I no, guess. No, it's not so bad. It was actually almost interesting to watch. There's though. another scene with Tracy Lords, Jim. I get, oh, that's, that's not Tracy Lord. Well, no, well, yes, it is. That's look the at, stripper. It, no, no. No, look at, see, it's Tracy oh, Lord. There, oh, it's Tracy. Oh, yeah, I see. No, oh, come on. Oh, Jim, relax. Oh, it is Tracy. Oh, oh. I'm going up to three at the bottom. Is on this one, Jim. Really? I'm Maybe it's not so bad after all. Maybe it's not such a bad movie after all. Maybe not. Oh, well. Okay. Thanks I to guess, Star Video. Yeah. At the, oh, well, you didn't give it your rating. Yes, I did. Did you? Three lobot or two and a half lobotomies. Okay. You said you're up to three lobotomies. No, I have four lobotomies, Jim. Four I mean, lobotomies? Yeah, I think it's four lobotomies. I don't have to three lobotomies. <laughs> she really is attractive, though. She, she is. Yes, I'll, I'll say that about her. She is really pretty. At least four lobotomies. And she actually can act. I mean, it's not like she can't read lines or anything. Oh. She, she has some talent, so I think yeah. she'll be all right. But she's not going to win an Academy Award based she, on you this. You mean she wasn't nominated? The Golden Gloves, maybe. The Golden Gloves, yeah. But not the Academy Award. Sorry to John Hartford on that one. but. Oh, well. If ever it were apropos, it is now at this one. Thanks again. Oh, you said it, didn't well, you? Well, I didn't thanks get Star through Video. with it, though, so you go ahead and thank him again. Thanks, Star Video at 3143 South Grand for their use of the movie tonight.